up everybody? JC to the fullest, what up? What's good bro? Still driving as you can see man, I'm still driving, I'm still driving. Hey, I want to I wanted to talk something about what we were talking about earlier about resilience, man. I'm gonna tell you what. I've uh, I'm at about 710 or 720 miles I drove today, and zero sales today, guys. Zero sales. You gotta have that resilience, man. You gotta you gotta fight through this. What's up, man? What's up? We gotta remember, man. You know, like. All the things we're blessed with, all the things we already have, man. Yeah, you gotta keep pushing. What do I do? What's up, man? Um, right now I'm doing my, I do a couple things, but I'm a general contractor and that's how I started out. Uh, building houses, framing houses, uh, you know, anything residential, we did it. And um, now I'm in the merchant services where I provide uh, processing for uh, small businesses. And I get to travel around. Today I drove all the way down to, uh, right by, I was I was right in uh, Kentucky by uh, Paducah. I'm from Chicago, I'm on my way back. I'm almost back now. But we gotta remember, man, we got all these great things, man. We got our family, we've got our mindset, we've got all this stuff, man. You can't win them every day, you know what I mean? Oh man, I, sorry, I missed that one, the one you just commented. Nah, man, actually, I, I got uh, almost 500 miles, and I just used over a half a tank of gas, man. This thing's awesome. Yes, I'm still driving, man. Still driving, drinking coffee, man, doing my thing, you know me. <laughs> but, yeah, man, we got we to gotta keep it moving. Keep it moving, keep it moving, no matter what, man. You can't win them every day. What could I have done better today? Um, honestly, I would say I would have, I would have did a little more research on where I was going. Yeah, I, I think I am going to downsize my general contracting. The, uh, oh, that's all good. I think I am going to downsize the general contracting because the, the rewards for, uh, being an independent contractor for the processing company is, it's amazing. You know, and, and I, I would like to bring people in with me. Uh, we can make a lot of money doing this. I mean, roughly just just a rough number, anywhere from eight hundred to twenty five hundred dollars per sale. And I mean, honestly, once you get the hang of it, you're going hard. It ain't nothing to get a sale every day or every other day. But I mean, I didn't I didn't really want to talk about like none of the work stuff or anything like that. Honestly, I was falling asleep driving, man. I've been I've been up since uh, about five o'clock this morning, man. I left my house about 6.30. It's nine. I've been driving. <laughs> but hey, as far as like what I, I could have done better today, uh, normally do like, I just, I just look at the map and find, you wanna find like smaller towns. Yeah, you gotta stay positive for sure. I find smaller towns, man, because it's easier to talk to those people. Plus the bigger towns, man, that's where a lot of your competition is. You, you kind of you get to stay away from them, man. So I get to hit, uh, you know, fresh, fresh grounds, man. Nobody's been there, so I have better luck getting my sales. I'll drive. I'll spend an extra hundred dollars in fuel today to make that eight hundred dollar sale. No big deal. You guys can go out there and, and fight in the concrete jungle for all those other companies, you know. Yeah, buddy. How's everybody's day today, man? Anybody get any of their goals done for today? Gotta smash them goals, man. That's what it's about. Non-stop smashing goals. Non-stop. If you don't get them, look at me, man. I put in almost 800 miles today, man, and I didn't get, I didn't hit my goals today, man. But you've been working. Forex. You've been what you've been doing, man. You've been trading. You guys should invite some people in here, man. Get some more people in here. I like to conversate. I appreciate the hearts too. Got a few leads so far, I'm happy. That's what's up. No time to trade, what'd you do today?
that's what's up, man. Yup. If you got a bad day, like both of us, man, might have been, might have been something in the air, man. You know what I mean? Whatever. But tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's definitely a new day, man. Awesome. Do that. Add as many as you can to that list, man. That's what's up, man. Do ballet. Do what you gotta do, man. Whatever you gotta do to make that money, man. Just do do what you gotta do. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it, look at it like a stepping stone, man. One step closer, one step closer. Move it, move it, move it. See, even just talking to you guys, man, now I'm charged back up, man. I wish it wasn't so late. I go south. You see me on Ocean Sky? I go in there all the time. Yeah, baby, it's all stepping stones. Keep it moving. 67 Camaro. You got a 67 Camaro, bro? Yeah, I, I'm in there on the chat, man. I, I'm, I'm everywhere, man. I'm on Oceans. I'm on Andy Frisella. I'm on uh, Sean Thomas. I'm on Chase with Ask a CEO. I'm with uh, Scott Lewis, Millionaire Motivator. I'm with Millionaire Mentor all the time, man. Jason, Cody, always with Cody. I'm with uh, Josiah, my newest guy, man. I'm my favorite, man. My most favorite is Caleb. And he killed it today, dude. He gets me so fired up. I wish I could just go talk to him for 15 minutes every day before I start my day. My day would be just on fire, man. I just walk around kicking people's doors in. <laughs> Dude, he gives me so pumped, man. I I talk a lot like him, man, but I, I'm gonna keep it to a minimal, man, because I friended Caleb. Caleb Maddox, he's 13, man, and I know that when I was on his page, I seen a lot of people uh, following me, so I didn't want to, uh, I don't want little kids listening to me talking crazy, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna keep it uh, fun for everybody. Gym time, baby. Health is important. Good for you, brother. Do your thing. Thanks for stopping in, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I just want to get on here with you guys, man, and just chat a little bit. I got a little bored, man. I was getting tired, man. I ain't even lie. I was dozing off. 100, baby. Limitless. Everything's limitless. The gym is limitless. Whatever your PR was, go smash it. Craig, what's up? What's up, Craig? We're just riding, talking about uh, our resilience, man. You can't win them every day. I'm in sales. I'm not sure if you know who I am, man. I had a bad day today. You got zero sales. You're going to have them days, man. But you got to stay positive. Get ready for the next day. There's days I got five, six sales. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a general contractor, too. I build homes. Uh, I don't, I'm not into real estate at all. Um... The other game I'm thinking of looking and getting into is Forex, though. It seems like it's uh, lucrative if you know what you're doing, man. So I'm going to study it for a while before I actually start spending money with it. Elegant Options is back. I love that, man. It's an awesome name, Elegant Options. Money gives you elegant options. For sure. Guys, I've been driving like 720 or 730 miles today. Right getting that money, man. I you getting this paper. So what else is good, man? What else is good? How many, uh... I am on my way back home, man. I, I drove down to uh, Kentucky today. I had, uh... a hunch to go down there, and it was a bad hunch. <laughs> I, uh, I travel for work, man, for my sales, and um, I do research on like work. I do research on like where I'm going and like uh, you know how the sales are there with my target market, and it seemed like that might have been a good place. But on the way there, there was normally on the way to my my destination. Buy a Lambo next month? No, within probably the next six months to a year, man. I want to get a Lambo. AKA Bobo. Who the hell is Bobo? 
<laughs> if you guys missed Bobo earlier, you guys gotta watch that. It's hilarious. I'm getting that Lambo. There ain't no doubt in my mind. I'm gonna have a Lambo. I probably should be smart, man, and purchase a house instead of rent right now, but I gotta get that Lambo, man. I think that's gonna fire me up to go out and do more, you know what I mean? Gotta get out there and stay fired up, man. Like Grant Cardone says, I follow him too. 10 times everything. Expensive beauties in the house. What's up? You guys gotta have big dreams, man. Yeah, Grant Cardone says not to even buy at all, man. He says, you know, it's better to rent. He said, if you're going to buy, buy to, you know, invest off it as an investment to make money off it. Don't buy your own personal home. Your phone's tripping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Buy to flip. That's right, Matt. Buy to flip. Sorry, guys, if it seems like I'm not paying attention too much. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to pay attention, man. Periscope's been off the chain the last couple days, man. I'm loving it. Andy Fasillo was off the chain today. Oh shit. Go, 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 go shout it. It's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' sip the party like it's your birthday. Expensive beauty. What? How, how'd your day go today? We're just we're just chit chatting. I'm on a long a long ride, man. I drove all the way down. I'm from Chicago and drove down by uh, Kentucky today. I'm on my way back. Almost there now. I haven't seen. I haven't listened to anybody's podcast. I've never listened to a podcast before. I should probably check it out. I wonder if Joe Rogan's on. Uh, Periscope. Anybody look for Joe Rogan before? Dude, I bet you he would be a trip on, on Periscope. Joe Rogan, he'd be tripping me out all day. What's up, what's up? Sorry, I missed who just came in. Everybody's got to keep that resilience though, you know? Keep it moving. Anybody reading any good books? I need a new book to start. That's awesome. I, Expensive Beauty, did you follow me from Cali? Southpaw, what's up, man? We're just riding, man, on our way back from a road trip from down by Kentucky, back back to the Chicago area. Awesome, I love giving out the energy. I need to start doing like uh, more personal uh, scopes. It seems like I do them driving all the time now. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Gotta get out here and make that money, man. I don't care where it's at, I'm coming to get it. If there's money there, I'm coming to get it. You gotta keep it moving. Keep that positive, that positive mind, man. Like, like every, it seems like too, like a lot of people, all, a lot of people today were talking about your mindset, you know, like what you think about and, and what, what your goals are and, and what you're trying to do. What's up? What's up? What was that, about 50 in New York City? I seen something about 50 in New York City. Yeah, share some hearts with me, guys. Invite some friends. Sorry I'm not talking too much right now, man. I'm, I'm exhausted. I had a long day. I'm trying to uh, drive right now and read while I'm driving. Yes, it is a 50 lyric. <laughs> 50 is my favorite, man. He His, his story, man, it, it's... It's inspiring because it's, you know, similar to mine. And uh, I think uh, maybe one day this week or maybe Saturday, I'm going to take Saturday off. I never take a Saturday off, but I'm, I'm going to take the Saturday off. The 50th law is awesome. And I drive all over. You seen them in London? 
Oh my god, I would love to see 50 live. I've never seen him live. But maybe Saturday, I'll get in a little depth with you guys about my entire life story, man. I mean, my story's kind of uh it's kind of extreme to a, to an extent. Yes, I love 50, man. Like don't mistake my confidence for arrogance. A lot of people think I'm arrogant and cocky myself, you know, like people that meet me in real life and when I talk to them and I hate it. I'm confident. I know what I'm doing. I wouldn't be talking or saying what I'm saying if I wasn't confident in it. You write people's life stories? That's awesome, man. Dude, I, I can give you kind of like a quick rundown, man, to kind of just give you guys a little bit of insight about my life story. Um, when I was born, dude, 50, all I listen to is 50, man. I'll, I'll show you my, my phone. There's probably like 10 Jay-Z songs in there. There might be a few from uh, a few other rappers, but I've got like 15 of uh, 50 Cent's albums in my phone. That's all I listen to. When I start feeling like low energy or coming down, man, like, dang, man, this is a rough day or whatever, I throw 50 in, and within 20 minutes, man, I'm back on track. Dude, I'll follow you, man. Hold up. I think I am following you, ain't I? I thought I was following you. For some reason, there's like a bunch of people I was following, like Sean Thomas of in uh, Ocean, you, this girl Susie. For some reason, I'm not following no more. Now I am. I just followed you again. Yeah, we can pick a day, man. We can definitely have a 50 session, man. I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick rundown, man, on, on my life. My name is John Peter Cerrone. That's my name. And when I was born, my father and my mother, they named me Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. And um, I'm going to ignore the, 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 the text for a minute, guys. Um, my name is John Peter Cerrone. When I was born... And to this day, my birth certificate says Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. Uh, my mom and dad were together till I was about seven or eight. I would say about eight. I, I think too, uh, I blocked a lot of things out as a kid because it was kind of, of a bad a bad childhood. But um, when I was about eight, my dad asked me who I wanted to live with. And I told him I wanted to live with my mom because my dad was kind of abusive, man. Like to my mom, us kids, physically and mentally, man. Like, he didn't molest anybody or anything like that, but I mean, he was fit, he would physically beat on us. He put cigarettes out on my hand because I couldn't figure out my times tables. Like, it, it was kind of rough. And when he asked me who I wanted to live with, and I told my mom, he went to the social security office and told me that I didn't deserve to have the Italian name. Yeah, he is. And, um, he told me I didn't deserve to have the Italian name, went to Social Security and changed it to English. So now my name is John Peter Cerrone. Hence why I named my son Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. And uh, I, so I gave him my name. He, my son has my real name. And uh, Shane, what's up, brother? I hear a name on somewhere. But uh, Shane, I'm gonna start this story over because I just started it. There's a fire truck. Sorry guys, I had to stop for a second. What's up, baby? I hate flashing lights. <laughs> just kidding. All right, here, I'll, I'll start over real quick, Shane. Check it out. Uh, I was kind of telling everybody my, my, my life story really quick. Dude, that would be awesome. Rinky, if you want, man, hit me up on like Instagram so we can talk. Yeah, people never move, man. It bothers me too. Ocean, Sky, Shane, thank you for uh, sharing uh, the followers. Let's get some people in here. I'm going to get everybody my, my life story. I guarantee you they're going to be a little excited about what they're about to hear. Let's get a bunch of people in here. I'm gonna get this story going. It'll definitely be worth the story. I wanna get as many people in here as we can. Um, I'm gonna give them a little rundown of my life story. I, 
I was, um, when I was born, I was born Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. That was my birth given name. Yes, please listen. I, I, I would love to share my story with you guys, and I guarantee you I will inspire you to move forward in your life. I don't care where you're at. Listen to this. My name is Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. Right now, my name is John Peter Cerrone. I was, my mom and dad split up when I was about eight years old. My dad was very abusive. He would put cigarettes out on my hand because I couldn't figure out my times tables. He would beat us kids. There's me and my three sisters and my mother. He used to beat on all of us. He never molested any of us. He would mentally abuse us to the point where we would all, every last one of us would cry. I mean, it was, it was the things he would say, I don't even want to talk about. It was just, he was just a horrible person. So he asked me who I wanted to live with. And I told him, I want to live with my mom. I was deathly scared of this man. And um, so he was mad at me for saying, I want to live with my mom. He went to social security Brought my birth certificate, Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. Had my birth name changed to English and told me I didn't deserve to have the Italian name because I wanted to live with my mom and not him. And um, so once that happened, my mom and dad kind of split up. Uh, my mom and dad tried to get back together. My dad brought us to Colorado. He failed out there at whatever self-employment thing he had going on there. So we drove to Florida with nothing but gas money. We slept in a moving truck for about a month straight. All of us slept like on the floorboards, in the seats, in the, in the, in the box end of the truck. We slept in there. Our dog, he um, used to beat our dog and our dog went with us. Our dog's name was Manja, which means eat in Italian. He, always, he, always, he would eat anything. I'll never forget that dog. He was like a, a white husky. And um, one day we went out there and I seen a bunch of blood all over the chain where the dog was chained up. And my dad said, you know, somebody must have stolen or whatever. I think my dad, I don't know the true story behind it, but I think my dad beat that dog to death. Um, anyway, we, we were able to finally move into a hotel and stay in a hotel and they finally got me back in school. I was out of school, I think for like six months or so. I don't. I honestly don't remember because I was so young. There's so much stuff going on. I kind of blocked a lot of it out as I was growing up. And um, I got my parents in trouble when I went to school because everybody was supposed to draw a picture of their house. And I drew a picture of a hotel. And a teacher came to me and asked me why I drew a picture of a hotel. And I kind of explained it to her why I did it. Well, DCFS and like all these people came in, started questioning my parents, what was going on? We didn't have a residence. Um, just a, started a bunch of trouble. And my mom and dad started arguing a lot at that time in my life. And um, I woke up one, one night after we got kicked out of the hotel, we didn't have no money. We're back sleeping in the truck. And uh, the cops were there. There was flashing lights everywhere. I, I sat up. My mom literally like pissed herself. My dad beat the hell out of my mom. My mom had him locked up. And um, they, the cops actually, well, they didn't, he didn't get locked up. He got put in the back of the squad in cuffs. And for whatever reason, I guess my mom told him, I don't want him in jail. I just want, us to, want him to leave us alone and let us go. So my dad said, we couldn't have none of our stuff, nothing. He took a can of SpaghettiOs and a can of beans and whipped it out the window on the ground at us and drove off. Never seen him again. So we went to a shelter. We probably went to like, I don't know, maybe like three or four shelters, man. Like <clears throat> trying to get, you know, getting back into school. Like all this stuff was going on. All these kids were like playing roller skating and stuff. And like, I was like, dude, like I don't have any roller skates. And like they kind of kept the boys and girls separated, like you know the toys. And I looked over in the girls' toy box, and I seen roller skates. And I grabbed them, I put them on my feet, went roller skating with all the kids. Yeah, I'll share my story, man. I ain't got no problem sharing. <clears throat> Let me get some coffee. I'm getting a little, a little dry throat, guys. Talking a lot. Anyway, my mom, uh, <clears throat> my mom's been a waitress for about 37 years her whole life 
and she got a job at Denny's, scraped up 300 bucks to drive us back up here by Chicago, or she, 300 bucks to buy a junk car, and, I, and, what, and then she saved up some money for gas, whatever, drove us back up here by Chicago, because this is where her brother, my Uncle Jay lives, and um, we stayed with him for a little bit. My mom kind of got back on her feet. My uncle at the time was getting into real estate. He owned an apartment complex with like 12 apartments there. And there was one that was vacant and he could get us in there. There was a one bedroom apartment. Me and my three sisters and my mom stayed in that apartment. And um, at that time I was starting to grow up. I was about 13 or so. Um, just starting to get into high school I believe at the time. And I felt like I was supposed to be the man of the house. And uh, so what I did, there was no room to sleep anywhere really, you know, like it was me, my mom and my three sisters in a one bedroom. Like literally there was like a bedroom, there was the living room, there was a kitchen and a small bathroom off the kitchen. <clears throat> and uh, I slept on the floor by the front door. There was only one door. I slept on the floor by the front door because I felt like I had to protect my family. Like there was so much stuff going on. It was not a good neighborhood. There's always gunshots and like alarms and stuff like that going on. And um, I'll try and keep this going fast, you guys. I know it's a kind of long story. There's a lot that, that's going on in my life. Uh, so anyway, I got into high school and uh, started hanging around everybody, you know, like I, I, I didn't discriminate against nobody. White people, black people, girls, boys, gangbangers, stoners. You know, normal, good, uh, good, like, you know, high level grade kids, like everybody, man. Cool, man. I, I appreciate it. So at this point, man, this is when you get to high school, everybody starts claiming something, you know, like what type of person they are. They're starting to become a person. They're starting to, you know, be involved in, in their life and where they want to go. And like here by Chicago, there's a lot of gangs and I was cool to all of them. Like the GDs would see me hanging out with the Vice Lords. The Vice Lords would see me hanging out with the Kings. The Kings would see me hanging out with the 2-6. And after a while, everybody started getting a little ballsy. And uh, they didn't like that I was hanging around with everybody. I started getting my ass whooped every day. I go to school every day. I never fought before. I was never a fighter. Every day I was getting whooped on. I mean, slammed in the lockers, books thrown down the hall punked out in the hallways, kids laughing at me. And uh, one day I had it, it was it. This kid came up and smacked these books out of my hand and I reached back and I cracked them right in the face as hard as I could. And the, the kid fell on the ground, man, I'll never forget it. And he started like seizuring and snoring and I knocked him out cold, like literally like, I'm gonna pull over real quick so I can talk to you guys cause I, it's a little hard driving, but at that point, I realized, wow, dude, like, I could do that. I never knew I could do that. I've never hit nobody in my life. Like, I always hated violence because, of, like, I grew up with my dad. And um, so anyway, man, I, I kept hanging around everybody. I still was catching beef, you know, so I, I would leave. And I, I left school one day, man, and these two kids were coming, running down the train tracks, man. They are running right at me. And um, what's up, Bearcat? These kids were chasing me down the train tracks. And one of them, it looked like he had a pistol, man, and, and, a, and a GD came out of the house and waved a shotgun at him. The kid took off running. He literally took off running. I'm telling my life story. I don't want you guys, you know, just getting in here thinking I'm talking about negative things because I'm not. There, there's a real point behind what I'm talking about. So anyway, like, out of all the gangs, the GDs were the ones that kind of, like, took to me. Yeah, please watch the, watch the replay. Give me some hearts. Share those with your friends. Um, but let me continue on. Anyway, you know, the GDs took to me, man, and, I, and they accepted me. Nobody actually ever accepted me. You know, like, I was on my own. I was always doing my own thing, man. And, and when they accepted me, I was all in it, man. Like, I became a part of that lifestyle, and it was the biggest. I would. It, it's a mistake for everyone looking at it. I don't take anything back. Anything in this entire life that I ever lived, I would never take none of it back. Not not one bit of it. But I started hanging around with them, doing bad things. I ended up going to jail and stuff. You know, like I started 
put instilling all these core beliefs in my mind of what a man should be. And they were all so bad. They were all about being a tough guy and, you know, who's running the block and, you know, who can become a boss and, and, and do all this, you know, crazy stuff. And like, it just led down all these bad roads. And I, and I ended up, you know, needing money at this point, man. I needed car. I needed, I needed a lifestyle. I needed money to hang out with girls. I needed like all this stuff. Wicked Queen, what's up? Again, I, I don't want you to think I'm talking negative in here. I'm kind of at like uh, sharing my life story and there were some bad parts in it and you just walked in on it. But anyway, um, I ended up going to jail for a while. I came home, kind of got my stuff together, veered back off and um, I got, actually I started going, working for a oil change place and I was making like 6.75 an hour. Cake is good, we all want the cake, that's what this is about. And I'm gonna share some of that with you. I'm trying to get through this as fast as I can. But um, I was making 6.75 an hour. I got a job offer for a union job as a laborer for Local 75. So I joined the union making 28.75 an hour. I went from 6.75 to 28.75 an hour. I was still hanging around Riff Raff. I didn't really have a lot of good people that I should have been hanging around. I, I never had money like that. I'm clearing anywhere from 1200 to 1500 a week. I'm blowing every dollar before my next paycheck, partying and drinking and all this stuff. And I was just going down the wrong road. And at the same time, the economy crashed. Um, I did miss a part back when I was about 18 years old. I went to Illinois Center for Broadcasting. I was really into um, radio. I did radio and TV there. I got into um, the production end of it. So when I lost my union job, I kind of went into DJing at bars and making DJ CDs and um, it wasn't cutting it. I was losing everything. My truck got repoed. Uh, my gas was getting shut off. I was way behind in everything, man. And so I turned to one of my friends who sold drugs. If I ever needed money for a bill, like my phone or this or that, he'd give it to me, you know, and he knew I'd give it back to him. We, we grew up together. And uh, one night, I think I called him and he was, um, he was out partying and stuff. He was doing his thing and normally he doesn't party. And he was mad that I called him and he showed up at the bar where I was at and he handed me a scale and he handed me a, an eight ball of cocaine. And he said, give me $80 for this. You can make 250 bucks off this make 5.7 grams and you can make 50 bucks off each one. It's 250 bucks, you owe me 80. I was like, wow, whatever, dude, screw it. I'm in the bar, why not? So I did it. And um, that was where it all went bad, man. Like it, it went from one ball to two to an ounce to four and a half ounces to nine ounces, 18 ounces, picking up a brick. Like it, it got ridiculous, like it, within like three months. And um, I ended up getting prison time over it. Uh, I got caught by an informant and, and uh, six months later they arrested me for it. They were watching me. They could never catch me doing it again. I was very careful about what I did. Dude, I'm keeping it as real. Like I will give my entire real story. You can look me up on the internet. I'm sure it's there. So I'm not gonna sit here and put on some fake show. And um, JC Ocean Unlocked. Dude, and like, so anyway, I went to the joint, man. I came home and I literally had nothing. You, Dude, you will fail and fail and fail, man, over and over and over. So I came home from the joint in 2011 and um, I had nothing, dude. I had raggedy old clothes. Dude, I mean, I was ripping like 400, you know, not 400, $4,000 in a night, dude, like four, Four grand in a night was nothing for me to make doing what I was doing. And uh, you're welcome. I'll share any time. And, um, dude, we were out partying it off and, you know, blowing money. And, and when I got arrested, dude, you know what it came out to be? Less than minimum wage. When I went to the joint, I had no money on my books for food. I had to eat state food, soy meat, ask people for food. I had to hustle in, in there playing card games and learn numbers and, and card games to make money so I could eat because it wasn't enough food from the state. Like it was, it was horrible. So I come home, I got nothing, no clothes, no cars, no money, no friends, 
The only people trying to contact me were the people that put me on. First thing they did, I was home for two days. They found me and asked me if I wanted to get back at it again to make money. I told them, no, I can't do it, man. My, my first offer when I went to prison was nine years, and it was over a $50 bag of cocaine. That's what they caught me with, selling a $50 bag of cocaine. They offered me nine years because 11 years beforehand, I got in trouble and went to the joint, and they tried saying that I was a menace to society my whole life. I just was never caught. And so um, I ended up getting it dropped down to five. I took five years for that $50 bag of cocaine. That was in 08, I came home in 2011. What they do here in Illinois, I don't know if it's the same everywhere else, they give you day for day. So I ended up doing two and a half years for that. I come home, I had absolutely nothing. And I stayed at my nephew's house. And uh, my nephew let me stay there with him in, in a bedroom at his house. I literally had like a, an old mechanics tool set, a five gallon bucket, a couple screwdrivers, I think I had a hammer, and that was it and a crotch rocket. I saved up $750 when I came home doing like little side jobs and stuff, uh, you know, to get a phone and get the basic stuff I needed. Um, and I bought a crotch rocket because it was 750 bucks. I can go anywhere for cheap. So I was like, awesome. I got a 93 Jigster 750 for 750 bucks. I had to throw a front tire on it and it was good to go. So anyway, um, I had no tools, no nothing. Only thing I ever did my whole life was asphalt. Uh, I paved with a, with an asphalt company doing roads and highways, parking lots, and so on. Um, so I figured I could start seal coating driveways, you know, put a, a coating of sealer on them to make good money. And I started doing that, and uh, and it, it took off a little bit, man. But I, I, had, I had to borrow a truck. I had to borrow a trailer. I had to borrow all this stuff, man, to get started. It was so hard. And it was like, man, I had to do like 10 driveways a day at $30 to make 300 bucks. Dude, and it took me, by myself, it took me like 12 hours. But I had like another 120 in material, so for 12 hours I made 150 bones, man. It was like, this is not cool, this is not enough. You know, like, I'm done with this, you know. So I took my last $237 I had in my account, and I took $236 of it out and made business cards. I didn't have no, I didn't advertise or do nothing before. I just kind of just went around seal coating. And I spent the rest of my money. I went all in, all tips in, man, on business cards. And all it said was Cerrone Construction, Commercial Residential, my phone number. It did not say what I did. And uh, I handed them out. I had like 500, or no, I think I had 1,500 of them made up. I ended out like a thousand of them. I ended up with 500 of them left and I, I hung on to them in case I needed to give them to people. And dude, I started getting phone calls for like, can you frame houses? Do you do roofs? Do you, do you recommend a good plumber? Um, windows and doors, gutters, siding, soffit, fascia. I'm getting all these calls and I'm like, dude, I never touched a hammer in my life. Like, what am I gonna do with this? I've never touched a hammer in my life and I got all these people calling. So I was thinking back, I'm like, dude, I, I know a bunch of journeyman carpenters that are not working. These guys frame houses, these guys do carpenter work. I know they're awesome at what they do. I call them up. I'm like, hey, check it out. I got an offer to frame two 1,100 square foot houses. And um, I didn't tell them, but they offered me $25,000 just for labor. They would supply the material. So I hired these guys for 30 bucks an hour. I ended up spending like $8,000 on labor for each house. So I made like $9,000 off that job that I did not touch. I didn't touch that job. So at that point, I'm like, dude, this is this is it. I found it. I know what I'm good at. I can delegate. So I went around and found my plumber buddy that's not working, my electrician buddy that's not working, my roofing buddy that's not working, my carpenters that are not working, and I brought them all in and brought them out to Hooters and sat down with them and told them, Check it out. I'm gonna go file to be a general contractor. I am gonna go get an $8,000 policy for insurance so we are covered. I am filing for an S corporation and I'm starting my business. Hand up, hand out, baby. That's exactly right. So I became a general contractor and I became, in a sense, these guys' boss, but to avoid the liability of taxes and all of that, 
I went and bought all of them a DBA. $5 per DBA. DBA means doing business as. That means they are now a sole proprietor. I bought all five of them a DBA and I bought all of them their own insurance, which makes them their own entity, which makes them responsible for their own workman's comp and their own taxes. And I did a lot of this reading on all this stuff while I was in prison. So now all of these guys have their own insurance and they have their own entity. I provide the work, you guys get it done. So now these guys are out, they're doing their thing, we're going, we're going, we're going. Long story short, last year I had $387,000 roll through my account. Not profit by far, but that's how much money came through my corporate account. And uh, at that point, this is 2015. This is my fourth year going in. This is my fourth season. So that was my, the end of my third season, I had $387,000 roll through my account. And at that point, when I did those taxes and seen what, what numbers came through, I was like, this is amazing. Like I, I literally was riding around on a crotch rocket with a bucket. <laughs> doing handyman stuff three years ago. I got 387 racks run through my account. It was, it was just amazing. Now, I started getting into the law of attraction. I started getting into uh, positivity. I started getting into think and grow rich. Uh, Robert Greene, the 48 laws of power, uh, 33 strategies of war. The Art of Seduction, Psychology. I read up on psychology just randomly. And honestly, that, I think that was like the one thing, if I could ever take it back, I would not have read up on psychology because now I want to overanalyze everybody and everything around me. Oh my God. I drive myself nuts because I'm watching people's postures. I'm watching how they, if you hold your hands like this, that means you're confident. If you slug your shoulders, that means that you don't care. Like I'm watching all this stuff and I'm like, you guys are driving me nuts and you ain't even said a word to me. Psychology is awesome. I do love it, but it, it, it drives me nuts because I am literally breaking everything down around everything. Every little thing you can think of, I'm breaking it down, breaking it down. How that job went, the production on it, what, what people were on that job. Every time this dude's on that job, I'm slacking. Every time this dude's on that job, we're getting it done. Oh my God, dude, it was going, I was going nuts. The Art of Thinking. Is that a book, bro? <coughs> but um, anyway, there's there's all a bunch of other things that, that, were, that were in my life that I kind of left out. <coughs> I was trying to rush through it and kind of give you guys a quick rundown. Uh, two years ago, I had the two and a half years ago. I had the biggest blessing in the world. I had my son Giovanni. Where did I say I at? What was that? But uh, two and a half years ago, I had my son Giovanni. And if you guys remember back in the beginning of the story, how I told you my dad told my my dad took my real name Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. He took that name away from me and gave me John Peter Cerrone because he said I didn't deserve to have. The Italian name because I did not want to live with him. I handed my real name down to my son. Um, I really don't know if there's any confusion or anything as far as the state goes because my birth certificate still says Giovanni Pietro Cerrone, but my social security card says John Peter Cerrone. I named him, I named my son after my real name. My real name is Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. But when my mom and dad split up, my dad asked me who I wanted to live with. My dad is the Italian side. When I, my dad asked me who I wanted to live with, I told my mom. He went down to the social security office and changed my name from Italian to English. Wicked Queen. Right now I am in a 2004 uh, Chevy Duramax 2500 Turbo. Sorry, I just seen a question about my father and I missed it. Good question at Solo. What was the question? I'm sorry I missed the question. I've not seen... 
I have seen my my dad one time since uh, he left when I was, I think when we were in Florida, if I remember right, I was about 10 years old at that time when he bounced. But there was, when I was about six or seven, I got hit by a car and I broke my left leg. And um, that was pretty messed up too because I was scared to walk on crutches. I was so deathly scared to walk on crutches. I'm gonna answer that question in a second. It's just so many things keep popping up in my head that I kind of block out. And um, I was riding my bike across the street with a bunch of my friends and I ended up getting hit by a car. Broke my leg, scared to walk on crutches. And um, I started walking around in my kitchen and I got stuck. And I was standing in the corner and my dad said, uh, I'm not helping you. You gotta figure out how to get out of that corner. And I stood there for about two hours until I started shaking. I couldn't stand there no more. Thank you, man. I, I, I love all the hearts. And I started shaking so bad, standing in the corner, started crying and my mom came in and tried to help me. And my dad hit my mom for trying to help me move. And I ended up shaking to the point where I fell on my leg. I fell backwards like on my leg to try and, you know, stop the fall. And um, so I got a bunch of money I got $13,000 for that accident. And when my mom and dad split up, my dad had the money somehow, because I was too little, I was young, I didn't know how like everything worked with, um, you know, what account it was in or where it was at. He never told my mom where it was at. And uh, so I assumed, you know, my dad probably spent the money, he was a, a douchebag. And uh, when I was 18 years old, my dad showed up in those apartments where we lived in that one bedroom apartment with me, my three sisters and my mom. And uh, he showed up knocking on the door and I didn't think nothing of it. Thought I was one of my friends, didn't look to see. I opened the door and seen him and I slammed it because I've not seen my dad in about, I don't know, eight years or so. I was about 10, I was about 18 at the time. So I haven't seen him in about eight years. And I was little and I was so scared of my dad when I was little. But when I opened the door when I was 18, my dad was a little smaller than me. My dad was smaller than I was. Um, I didn't know whether to punch him in the face or hug him. I didn't know, I couldn't tell you what to do, man. Like I freaked out and slammed the door and I called all my family members, my mom, she was at work. My older sister, she was at work. Like I started freaking out. I was, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was crying. I didn't know what to do. And um, I gathered myself back together. I opened the door my dad's like, hey, look, uh, you're 18 now. You can get your money from your accident. Let's go get your money. You need both of our signatures to get the money out. So we go get the money out. And uh, he, on the way there, he's like, hey, look, uh, 6,000 of this money is mine. I put money in there with your money. And when we got there, it was like $13,600. And I'm like, I remember it being like $13,000 that the money was mine. That, that's what the settlement was. I'm like, I wonder what he's talking about. I wonder if he needed to spend money for a lawyer or something, you know, to help get this money. Maybe that, you know, it was his. I did. I was so like shocked that he was around and I was driving in the car with him. And I did, you know, like, I was like, whatever, dude. Like, I don't even know. Like, let's just go get this. So we go down there and we get back in the car and he puts all the money in an envelope. He puts it in his glove box and he locks it. And I'm like, he's like, look, you know, when you got a lot of money like this, you gotta be safe. And he's like trying to give me some weird story about how he don't trust my mom and don't tell her about the money. We're gonna go get you your own bank account right now and this and that. And uh, he jumps on I-80 and starts heading west. And um, my house was east on 80 and I'm like, what is going on? You know, I was scared to talk to him. You know, I didn't know what to do. We get about two hours away, man. I turn around and looked at him. I just started mean mugging him. I was starting to get mad. I started remembering all the things he did to us kids. I remember him beating my mom till she peed her pants. I remember like all this stuff and I kind of like started puffing up. Like I turned over and looked at him and the only thing he kept going through my head is when I hit that kid in school and I knocked him out. Cause I was, I was about to just grab that glove box and break it, grab my money and punch him and get out of the car and find a way to call my mom. Back then I had a pager like, there was no like, cell phones or nothing yet. But, so I looked at him I'm like, where are we going? And he goes, oh, I just, I want to go for a ride with my son. I can't go for a ride with my son. I'm like, not going this far. And he immediately got off the next exit, turned around, drove back. We got back to my apartment where we stayed. And he says, uh, 
Look, I gotta go see my buddy Meatball. He, he has a, imagine that. He has a buddy, his, his name's Meatball. When I get back, we're gonna go get you your own account. My dad left and never came back. He had the money in the glove box and never came back. And uh, I told my buddy Davey and my buddy JR about it. And I told him, look, don't tell my mom about none of this. She don't know about the money. She knows, she knows he came here, but don't tell her that about the fucking money. Fuck the money. It cost me $13,000 to never, ever, ever see that dude again. He'll never come back here and hurt my family again. I'll spend another $13,000 to ensure that he never comes back to hurt my family again. And uh, so my friends ended up telling my mom. My mom grabbed me. We went down to the police station. They expedited him back from Colorado. He stayed in jail. Instead of giving me the money back, because the judge was like, check it out. I'm going to make his bond $13,000. I want $500 for, for court costs, for wasting my time, for him being the person he is. And I'll give you $12,500 of the money. And I was like, awesome. Like, I don't care. Like, I'll, you can keep the 500 bucks. Thank you very much. Like, awesome. I, 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 my whole life thought that money was gone. And uh, he sat there for 364 days. You can only stay in the county jail for 364 days. After that, you got to go to, to prison. And instead of him giving me the actual money back that he took, the 13 grand, you know, instead of him doing that for his bail, he called my grandparents, his mom and dad, and had them pay the money while he hung on to my money. And so when I got the money, I hated the money. I didn't like the money because the money wasn't from him. That money, that money, thanks for following me. I'm getting lots of follows and I appreciate it. That money was my grandparents' money and I hated it. I resented the money. I went back home and look, I've never seen that much money at 18 years old in my life. I had $12,500 in an envelope and I stared at it for about an hour and I hated it. I grabbed the, I actually grabbed the envelope and whipped the money across the room and I left. And uh, I came back and, um, gathered the money back together because I knew you know it's a lot of money you know my mind was just messed up I didn't know what to do so I kind of uh grabbed the money and I'm like you know what dude I've never had nothing nice dude I'm I, we always came up you know kind of rough so I, I never had a car I could never afford a car clothes everybody wore Jordans and like back then like Jenkos were in and like all these clothes and all this stuff and I never had none of it man I always had like junk $20 shoes, you know, always been made fun of. People didn't really like me. They didn't want to hang out with me, man, you know, so like I, I felt like, you know what, I want to fit in. I want to be cool. I went and bought a, this was in um, 97 I think it was. I went and bought a 1991, I'm 36 years old. I went and bought a 91 Park Avenue. Uh, went and bought a set of rims for it. I spent six grand on the car. I spent a thousand dollars on the rims. I got to use rims for it. Put sounds in it. Bought clothes. Gave my mom like three stacks, and I was out. Money was gone. Done. I hated it so much. I didn't want to even save it. I didn't want nothing to do with it. Just burn it up. I was giving my friends fucking. I, I'm sorry, percussion. I was giving my friends like two hundred dollars and five hundred dollars. I didn't care about it. I, I, I hated the money because it wasn't for my dad. He'd rather sat there for a year in jail than give his son his own money back. So I, re, I hated the money and resented it. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of in the hood. There's people walking around don't like it. <laughs> Might have to smack somebody around a little bit. But, uh, yeah, he, he, was a, he was pretty much a douchebag, man. You know, he did a lot of horrible things. But, uh, it is what it is, you know, because that entire life I lived, I would not be the person who I am today, man. I would not, I would not be that person today. But on the other hand of that, now that I understand, I'm going to read something. I read this earlier. I'm going to read it again. You are who you are. I'm going to read something to you guys real quick. Give me one second, guys. I read this earlier today. This is my this is my favorite thing, dude, and I re I live by it. Thank you. I appreciate you saying I'm a great person. Thank you. Watch your thoughts because 
they become words. Watch your words because they become actions. Watch your actions because they become habits. Watch your habits because they become your character. And watch your character because it becomes your destiny. And because I understand that process of how your thoughts become things, how your thoughts materialize, how you manifest with my son, I want to start instilling all these great things with him. And um, thank you for following me on Instagram, buddy. I want to instill all these great things and give my son that's two years old right now a head start in life. Instead of him having to crash and burn, he's two years old, he'll be three in December. Instead of him having to go through all the stuff I went through to learn what I learned, he's still a fresh mind. I can, I can still teach him about the negativity, about the people to avoid, about all of this stuff. If you guys go on my Instagram, at JC underscore Limitless, my, I have pictures of my son there and videos of him there. Little Giovanni, that's my fuel. Yeah, time is flying. And um, I can warn him of all the negative things, but I am a firm believer. After I went to the joint, to the prison, you know, I kind of started having hate towards people because they're ignorant. They, they had no morals. They did not care. They were negative. They were stealing. They were fighting. They cared about gangbang. They didn't want to help themselves. Like, he too is limitless, baby. GC limitless. But um, I paused and reflected on what I was seeing and what I was, what I was going through at the time. And you want to know what it is? It's not, all those people in jail, 90% of it, it's not even their fault, you guys. <clears throat> and I hate that people have a bad outlook on people that are in jail and prison because, and I'll, and I'll tell you why I say that. Yes, everybody can make their own choices, but they can only make the choices based on the choices that are in front of them because if you don't know about something, how can you choose it? If you don't know it exists, how the hell can you choose something that you don't know exists? For instance, you are a product of your environment. What you are around and what you see is how you are going to act and react. Yes, your social surroundings impacts everything. What you don't know will kill you. And in the streets, in this world, a smile can get you killed. But at the same time, a smile can change somebody's whole day. You can smile at somebody because you don't know what they're going through. You have no idea what they're going through. They could have a big smile like this. Like, look at me. I'm, I look so happy. Like, look how happy I am and how positive I am. And that person driving by right now has no idea. I did not get no sales today. That person has no idea the mental war I went through being told no, 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 no all day. You know, and thank you for saying I have a great smile. But it goes both ways, you know. And I was watching a lot of people. The first step, man, if you want to go farther, is just to have an open mind. If you have an open mind, you're receptive. And if you're receptive, you're gonna you're gonna be able to accept things and, and do things. Darn Bobo. I wish Bobo was there. I would have sold Bobo. If he was if he was in a mechanic shop, I'd have sold him today. I could sell a guy named Bobo some stuff. But you know what? And uh Josh, Josh Greenbaum I follow, and I'm mad right now because I feel like I just put out a pretty good scope. And um, there's this thing, and you guys can tell everybody about it, that broadcasts in their, in their title. You know how this one says, every day I get birthday cake? There's 100 racks there in that safe. I don't know if I did or not. Let me see. I didn't. If you put hashtag catch, hashtag K-A-T-C-H. The cake is in your mind, man. Everybody's got the cake, Gina. That's the cake. I got a hundred racks here in the safe. <laughs> but if the broadcasters put hashtag K 
K-A-T-C-H. Their scopes will no longer disappear after 24 hours. They will stay there until they delete them themselves. So tell the broadcasters, tell them to put hashtag catch with a K and tell them to go to catch with a K dot me, catch dot me. <laughs> but um, I appreciate you guys listening in. I hope you guys enjoyed my story. I never thought I'd tell anybody my story in this fashion, especially a lot of people that I've never met face to face. I kind of revealed a lot of stuff. So, um, Shane, I'm going to cuss right now. So if there's any kids in here, cover your ears right now. Shane, you're a fucking gangster. Ocean Sky is on. And you came back in here to see me. I seen you just come in here. Fucking Shane. Fuck, fuck, fucking Shane. He came in here. That is Ocean Sky student. That is his name. Ocean Sky is on and Shane is in here with me, baby. Shane, I love you, brother. Thank you for your support. Thank all you guys for your support. Thank you for the hug. For all, for the hugs. Thank you, yes. Thank you for the hugs. The hearts are hugs. And um, Rinky the writer is like blowing my Instagram up. I love this dude already and I don't even know who he is. <laughs> What's up, guys? You know, like, I want everybody to like, um, really quick. Since there's, I got 12 people in here, I want you guys to put your real name underneath, you know, just, just uh, post up your real name. I'd like to see what everybody's real name is real quick, if I can read it as fast as it comes out. Just so I can kind of start connecting people, man. I, I like to connect. Some of... Marla, Mayra... Dave, James, Justice, Marlene, Gina, Legend, Shane, <laughs> Ernesto, dude, thank you guys, man, thank you so much for, uh, thank you so much for coming in here and hanging out, man, I hope you guys can, like, share, tell people, that, hey, man, if you guys got friends, man, tell them to come check this scope out. I wish I wish I would have put hashtag catch on it so it would stay longer. I wish I could edit it now. <laughs> Thank you. But um, I'm going to check out. It's 10 o'clock. I'm exhausted. I drove 772.3 miles today. I need to go home and uh, go to sleep, man. The million dollar smile. No, I'm not married. I am single. Uh, another kind of uh, tragedy I had was uh, I ended up finding out six months after my son was born that uh, my girlfriend was cheating on me for about a year, almost a year and a half. And I asked her why, and she told me because I work too much. So uh, I told her that this isn't going to work anymore, and I uh, so we kind of split up. But... <laughs> I'm enjoying being single though because I'm empowered now by all the things that I couldn't do. I don't get it either, guys, but it is what it is, you know. Like, I tried to explain to her, like, and, and you know, like when I asked her why she did it and she told me because I work too much, I'm like, I ain't got no 401k, I ain't got no pension coming. That's right, man. What doesn't make what doesn't kill us does make us stronger, man. But you know, I ain't got no pension coming. I ain't got no 401k. I ain't got no IRAs. I ain't got hundreds of thousands of dollars stacked in my safe like like this like this title says on this uh, scope. You know what, man? I I love going out to the clubs. I do, but I go maybe three times a year. I'm not gonna lie. I'll go out maybe three, maybe four times a year. Sometimes, you know, like if I had a good day, if I had a good day or if I had a good week, you know, and I want to kick back, I'm like, screw it, man. I'm going to drive up to the city, go out and hit some of these clubs really quick, you know, like just do my thing. But I don't go out much, man. It's got to be a special occasion. You got, I got to have something to celebrate. I look paranoid. No, 
I'm chilling. I'm t actually my diesel's smoking right now, and I was just wondering why. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. Something about the industry that I should consider. Can you type that again? I'll go clubbing in Florida. What was that about for me and my son? Yeah, I'm not paranoid. I ain't never paranoid. Everybody else should be paranoid about me because I'm going to be dropping. Come to L.A.? I'll go to L.A. Man, this thing is smoking. I'm going to take it for a ride. When it idles, it's been smoking lately. I think it's all these miles I've been putting on it. Love that turbo, man. Never gets old. I seen somebody post something about for me and my son. There we go. Now we got black smoke. I'm in the financial industry. You should consider having some type of retirement plan. And you, you want to know what? I do want to have a retirement plan uh, built for my son starting now. Um, I'm going to work on my financial retirement later. I mean, I honestly want to be retired in about 10 years if I can. That's my goal. I'm 36. If I can retire by the time I'm 46 or so, maybe 50, I would be happy with that. But I do want to start maybe some IRAs or maybe uh, uh, some Roth IRAs. I'm not sure which is better. Maybe I should talk to you about it. But I want to start something now for my son because I know it's slow building. I know the interest, uh, you know, the uh, the money that will be made off of the accounts will be kind of slow. But by the time he's, you know, of age, you know, it'll be worth something to him, you know. And then he can start building some more on that, I believe. Maybe we should talk. Hit me up on my Instagram. That way we can talk more on it. You know, there'll be more one-on-one. -on -one. I think Periscope should have... Uh, an option where I can click on one of your names. Oh, awesome. Let me screenshot that. My Instagram is the same as, uh, the same as my Periscope. JC at, or JC underscore limitless. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm the best dad, man, but I, I'm trying it sucks right now, you know, because uh, she, she's she got them most of the time because, yeah, on IG, it's the same as uh, my IG, my Snapchat, my Periscope, and my Twitter are all the same. JC underscore Limitless. But she's got them most of the time because I'm out here grinding. He's two. He does need me, but not as much as he's going to need me when he's like four, five, six, seven. 10 years old, you know, so I, I I go and grab them as much as I possibly can when I can, but I got to get out here and grind because she's, she's very much the opposite of me, you know, like, there's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting to have a normal job and, and living your life and doing stuff like that, but it's not me. I don't want to live check to check. I don't want to pay my bills and die. I don't want, I just don't want that, you know, and like, She's able to be there for him because she doesn't have the responsibilities that I have, you know, which is, it's just cool. It's fine. It's not a big deal. You know, everybody's got their own gig, but, uh, you know, so I'm out here grinding now so I can spend time with him later. No mediocre, baby. No mediocre. And that's another thing, man. I want to tell you guys, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'm so sick and tired of seeing all these kids being drugged up over ADHD and ADD. You want to know what I think that is? When you see a kid with ADD and ADHD, that is a very, very, very intelligent kid that is placed in a class or... Yes. That's a very intelligent kid that is placed in the wrong class. He, is, he or she is bored. That's why they're acting up. That's why they're doing what they're doing. There's no such thing. Oh my God, guys. Hey, let's all go see Sean Thomas, man. Uh, why don't you guys tell Sean if you guys enjoyed this scope? I want him to uh, kind of see what's going on. I think he was wondering like how my scopes are going, what they're about. Let's go.